Hello everyone, welcome back to Data Bracket. Today I'm back with the news video demo on which I'm going to perform an end-to-end -end ETL operation. This ETL operation will uh, perform extraction from Kaggle because Kaggle offers a lot of free data sets. So we are going to extract a sales data set from Kaggle. And using that data set, we will perform some transformations on Databricks and we will load the data onto Snowflake ta as a table. All of this is going to happen uh, using PySpark as our uh, base framework. So without any further ado, let's dive right into it and start implementing our solution. So here we are in the notebook. So this notebook uh, initially installs our required packages. One is Kaggle and another is Snowflake connector for Python. So this is nothing but a Python package which Kaggle extensively offers for the users to download data sets and submit uh, their uh, submissions as competition submissions so this is a public api and you can install it and this is a documentation i'm going to paste this in the description you guys can check it out so this will uh, allow us to connect to kaggle using kaggle's authentication which is nothing but username and a key so we can obtain the username and the key from by going to your profile and in the profile you will see this page in the accounts section where you can generate a new api token or you can expire an existing one and create new one since i've already created one kaggle doesn't allow me to create one more so i'm going to leave it as is so we have to place this file called kaggle.json in databricks it should be under root slash dot kaggle slash kaggle.json this should be the format like this should be the structure of the directory in the file where the uh, authentication should be placed so first let me install the necessary packages and we'll get into other steps as we progress so this is already installed for me so i'm not so it would not take a long time so everything is already satisfied let's wait for a few seconds yeah uh, the packages are installed now so I have created a small function which is called Kaggle auth setup which will accept a string as a JSON payload. This will have the username Kaggle username and the key to connect to Kaggle. And I'm going to also pass the directory structure where the file should be or where this JSON payload should be saved as. So as I said, it should be under root Kaggle, Kaggle.json. So what this does is this will actually collect the string that we are passing and it will load it as json using json.loads and it will return a json structured of uh, uh, dictionary so this dictionary we are going to write it by opening a file and then dumping the json dictionary as the file and we are going to simply save it under this location and if it is successful it will print successful if not it will uh, print setup as fail so let me call the, like define this function and if i call this it should say setup successful yeah, it is successful we can simply cat that file and we can see the uh, content of that json payload inside that file so we can verify this is working by simply listing the data sets from kaggle if it returns a uh, data set list then the connection is successful yeah, we are seeing the data set list so this is a small subset of list there are many data sets if you want you can go to the kaggle official website and go to the data sets section and explore the data sets but we are going to simply use the sales data analytics data set which is currently trending today so if we go to that data set we can either download it manually and put it in our databricks workspace through databricks file system or we can simply click on this three buttons and click on copy api command this will copy the command which is nothing but the same command that you see here let me paste that again it's the exact command so i'm going to remove the duplicate one and uh, i'm going to change i'm actually changing the permissions of this file because if you are working on shared clusters you don't want your authentication to be shared with other users so this Kaggle actually recommends you to do this. So I have actually done that. This is a necessary step only if you are on working on shared cluster. If you have a uh, 
or own cluster then the warning might be ignored so let me set this as well the set is done and let me download the data set so this will download the data set into found more recently modified yeah i've already downloaded this that's why it is not downloading the file but if you run this you should see a successful message stating that the file has been placed under databricks slash driver which is nothing but the temporary driver mount point so if we list this databricks file just using dbutils we should see the file sales data file we can see it here sales data dot zip all this uh, Kaggle data sets are zipped archives so they will be downloaded as zip we can unzip it directly in databricks by simply calling unzip and the file location followed by the file name this is a shell command so i'm passing the magic shell command here and if i run this it will unzip the file it has already unzipped the file so it is throwing me the error but it should work for you guys if i have to list the files i should see i, I can see that the file is unzipped and we can also see it here uh, it should be somewhere called csv let's see yeah this is the file sales data dot csv i'm not sure why it is not showing here it should basically sh uh, never mind uh this is the file that i'm talking this is the file that we're interested in sales data dot csv so this is right now in the driver right we don't want the files to be in driver we want them in to be in the bronze layer which is nothing but the file store which is like kind of a mount point or not a mount point you can see this in the dbs file system if you go to data section and okay let's let's come back to this so we i'm going i'm moving the file from the driver to file store so this is this will simply move the sales.csv file from database slash driver to dbfs file store and the recursive should be true so that it will move all the files if there are multiple files and it said true that means the file has been moved so let's list the database file system file store and we can see that the sales data.csv file is listed here and this is uh, somewhat 20 mb or so so let's let's read the file using spark simply by calling spark.read.csv and passing the file path followed by the header truth this makes sure that the csv file have its header uh, the column names are listed correctly so this will read the csv file into a data frame if we display the data frame then we should see the contents of the all, all the data so this have around two four six eight ten eleven columns or more i guess yeah eleven columns and uh, there are many rows uh, if we count we will get the count of how many rows are there in this data frame so it has around uh, one lakh eighty five thousand rows uh, if you feel that you have you're working on bigger files you can simply do a partition this is an extra step this is not needed for this demo per se and it is not in the scope of this demo as well but i am showing you guys how you can partition a data frame based on uh, column names because here we see that we have category column which have around four to five categories if you want to partition this entire data frame which is around one lakh eighty five thousand rows into different data like different files based on this categories column we can simply perform this option saying that df dot write this data frame into multiple files it should have the header and uh, you can specify the max records per file like how many rows you want the uh, file to hold that in that file it can be 100 it can be 1000 or it can be 10,000 because we have around 1 lakh 80,000 and we want it to be, be partitioned based on the column which is nothing but our category column and we can specify the mode either overwrite append and we can pass which format it should be written in either csv or parquet or other file formats of your choice like orc or something and simply pass the file location where you want those partitions to be saved and this will save those partitions in that 
specified directory or file system uh, this would take some time because you know, the partition is a uh, uh, like uh, heavy operation which is nothing but an expensive operation because shuffling happens in partitions so this would take around one or two minutes let's wait for the job to complete since this is a small data set the uh, job shouldn't take long but if you're working on bigger data sets it is highly recommended not to partition the data when you're writing it you can coalesce the data to merge the data frame so you can simply do your transformation on the in memory and you can write them into lesser files and not to partition when you're writing the files it's taking a lot of time okay i believe it will be done now all right almost done it took like 28 jobs and not 31 stages oh god it's still running if you guys want to see what is happening you can always go to the uh, spark ui and you can go to the dag and you can see what is happening in the dag like why it took so long what happened and you can see the sql uh, the sql graph and you can see the dag yeah it actually completed and if we will, if we can simply list the files under sales partition since we have placed that under sales partition folder we can see that we have around uh, one two three four four folders which is nothing but the four categories that is those are part of the data frame and again this is simply an extra step that i wanted to show you guys on how partition will work and we can simply read that partition and see that it is actually partition and the column name will be gone from that partition if we see we have category column here post partition we should not see the category column and uh, if we count that it should be less than 185000 columns let's see yeah, it is only 46,000 columns because it is divided into four partitions. And if we can simply display the DF1, it should not have the category column now. Yeah, we don't, we don't have the category column as you guys can see. It is gone because it this entire data frame is partitioned based on that column so that column will be relevant here and uh, yeah this is the actual transformation a simple transformation that i want to perform on the main data set which is nothing but we have a column called product which have like what are the products i just want to filter the product which is iphone or which contains iphone in the name like in the string of that column column value so I'm just gonna do simple filter on that data frame and filter based on the product column. If it contains iPhone, put that into an iPhone data frame. That is a simple transformation, not to make it complicated. I just made it in a single line. And this have around 6,000 rows. Everything has columns, so we can simply, if your uh, like higher management asks you to filter the data for only iPhone sales or if you guys are working on any uh, sales data sets filtering is a very good uh, transformation that you can simply filter out the content and simply pass it to the downstream users or your BS so we have the filtered data frame which is nothing but our iPhone data frame we can write this data frame to snowflake so I have created a snowflake uh, database which is nothing but Databricks test in that I have a Databricks schema I have created these two manually and uh, from Databricks if you want to connect to Snowflake we need that Snowflake connector which we installed initially during the beginning like initially when we started this demo so this snowflake connection actually uh, accepts like few snowflake options one is the snowflake url which is nothing but the url that you get from your snowflake account if you go to admin and if you go to accounts 
you can see your account here and if you hover on this small uh, link button you can see your snowflake url you need the snowflake url and you need your snowflake username username is nothing but the username that you use to log in or the username which is uh, under this account section and your uh, login password it will uh, ask for the database that you want the data to be placed or if you're reading from the data you want the database where your data is residing so my database uh, as i said i have created this database test as a database i'm passing that and database schema is my schema which also i manually created and warehouse and snowflake rule are uh, actually very specific to your use case or your organization i am actually on a free tier so i am using this compute warehouse which is extra small warehouse and account admin is the basic account that snowflake creates for trial accounts so you need this uh, snowflake source name as well which is nothing but the snowflake format and which is one of the connectivity options that you need to write like that you need when you're writing your data frame or reading from a database from snowflake so this will go into the format so with all the snowflake options in place we can simply call uh, write on our data frame which is nothing but iphone data frame so iphone data frame dot write format should be our snowflake source name format which is not net snowflake spark this is the format and we want the options to be passed we can simply uh, call this star star snowflake options to pass all these options in a single go or you can simply uh, pass one option after other by calling this option and you can pass sf url followed by url and again option username followed by the user that will be very uh, cumbersome and it will take a lot of space and it will be hard to read so this is the best practice that snowflake recommends and it is uh, present everywhere in the documentation and we need to pass a table where we want to write this iphone data frame to i'm going to call it as iphone sales so post writing if i come back to my schema i should see that uh, table created here and i'm using mode as override you can use append or any other mode and save will actually trigger this entire transformation and it will write the data so let's just write this i have already declared username and password which is in the state of this cluster i'm not going to run this cell but i will run this cell and this should actually write the data to snowflake yeah the job is executing and it will complete now yeah it has completed and we can come here and refresh the column and we can see the tables are created which is nothing but iphone sales and if we do a data preview we should see all the uh, rows specific to iphone only so this was the intent of this demo guys i believe this was helpful for you and you learned how to perform ETL from uh, Databricks to Snowflake and perform basic operations. I have many other demos coming in. If you have any specific request or want to learn any specific uh, service or use case, please do leave a comment so that I can create a video on that specific topic and publish it for you guys. Thank you again for sticking around till the end and I hope this was useful. Please hit the like button if you feel that this was useful and subscribe for more interesting content thank you guys